Okay, you guys aren't going to be easy on me. Um, that's okay. Did you all hear the question? That's not surprising. I have cheap mics, so I will repeat. All right. What is complex regional pain syndrome? And tell me everything you can about it. I'm guessing you were concerned you might uh, have it a little bit, so we'll hit therapy. Um, first thing I'd like to say is a lot of people, when I first started diagnosing this uh, back in the 90s, people didn't believe it existed. Um, and got a lot of fights over it. A lot of doctors who didn't believe they had caused a problem when they did a carpal tunnel surgery or um, a lot of battles that didn't really exist. The cast didn't call it, cause it. The trauma didn't cause it. So I've been in a lot of battles over complex regional pain syndrome. But first of all, complex regional pain syndrome is one of the most painful chronic pain conditions. It usually affects one limb, but it can it can affect more. Uh, it can because it, it gets into the central nervous system. It uh, usually starts with a nerve damage to a limb. Uh, I I believe it always starts with nerve damage to a limb. What is complex renal pain syndrome? Um, well, it comes from trauma or surgery, typically. Uh, it is, its cause is really too complicated for us to elucidate here. Uh, if you remember, we discussed in detail earlier about how the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system work together, the peripheral nervous system being the nerves, the central nervous system being the spinal cord and the brain and how pathways and circuits can get started in, in pain. Well, this is uh, one of those. The circuits are open. Excessive discharge, excessive nerve signal from the central nervous system causing prolonged excessive pain and dramatic changes through the sympathetic nerve system mainly. Now, the sympathetic, there's other things involved here, but remember the sympathetic nerve system is the fight or flight system. It changes skin color, circulation, uh, it involves the nerves, involves the, the tone. We went over that earlier in the nerve pain portion. So what I'm going to talk to you about is most of these people have fairly dramatic findings, but not always. Uh, you can look at someone and be one of those invisible diseases we discussed. Um, but usually, if when you're looking really closely and observing, you'll see some mild to dramatic skin color changes, some skin ch texture changes, some hair changes, some uh, temperature changes, and swelling. And it can be fairly dramatic. According to researchers, there's two forms. People who uh, study it like to break it down into two forms. Now, we used to cause call these uh, things causalgia and reflex sympathetic dystrophy. Uh, complex regional pain syndrome one is supposedly causalgia, uh, confirmed nerve injuries, and two is reflex, sympath di reflex sympathetic dystrophy, not confirmed. But I believe there's nerve injuries in all these cases. You just got to look and you got to figure out what happened. Um, they're direct, indirect uh, trauma, you know, uh, a bruise, a cast, a immobilization, uh, a stretching, a cut, a laceration. Now, the average age of the person that gets it about 40. It's rare in old. It's rare in children. Children usually get uh, children and teenagers who have neuroplasticity, which we discussed, usually get better quicker uh, and uh, have less symptoms later on in life. Uh, people that are, tend to be more sensitive, people that have autoimmune disease, fibromyalgia, and the, what I call, we discussed this, the sensitive people, the people that uh, uh, we used to use as the shaman, shamans, <laughs> they would notice things quicker. They tend to get it quick, uh, easier. Women tend to get it more often. It's, uh, to, to my uh, uh, belief, it's always associated with some trauma or nerve injury. You can always uh, find it. Um, the symptoms, again, uh, prolonged and comfortable severe pain. Burning, uh, I call I, I, no offense to anyone that has this, but I call them the squirmers. When I when I worked in chronic pain, uh, before I started doing the health education, I could go out in my office and look, and I'd see people squirming around. Um, and other than kids with ADD, this used to be my complex regional pain syndrome patients because they couldn't get comfortable. Uh, they have a burning, pin pins like in your um, arms, needles, squeezing sometimes. Very sensitive. Light touch can bother clothes, uh, bed sheets. Uh, the skin changes are usually one of the things we look for to, to say, you know, this is it. Uh, cold and hot temperature changes, blotchy purple, red, or pale colored skin. Uh, this is all due to the, the sympathetic nerve changing things and the microcirculation. 
and um, you know you'll see texture changes, shiny skin, thin skin, uh, sweating, uh, dry skin, hair growth changes, stiffness in the joints, decreased ability to move the area, uh, dystonia, actually high tone uh, from the excessive discharge, abnormal postures from the excessive discharge. Um, now, it's hyperactive nerves, and it's a very painful syndrome, but people forget it not just affects one side, it affects the whole body, and it can travel because it's involved in the system of nervous system circuits to other parts of the body, but it also, through the immune system, increases inflammatory cytokines, which we discussed. That causes redness and warm feeling through the whole body. It can cause autoimmune problems, fibromyalgia symptoms, and arthritis symptoms because of the increased inflammatory effect through the whole body. It's going to be fairly dramatic there. Sometimes that's the toughest part to, to, to uh, treat. Now, diagnosis is a clinical diagnosis. It's based on uh, a lot of different testing we can do. Uh, we can do all kinds of testing. The most important thing I want to tell you here is you've got to rule out other disorders that are treated differently, like Lyme's disease, autoimmune disorders, myopathy, mitochondrial disease, neuropathy. Uh, we've discussed some of those in our, uh, in our uh, previous uh, discussions. Uh, lots of um, things can use tests. We can test the nerves. We can test the sympathetic system. We can do bone scans. By the way, be careful about bone scans. People usually will often get osteoporosis in the limb, in the, in the limb that's are affected. Therapy. Now, we, we go over therapy a lot in the end of program, in the end of this program, which is uh, called Find the Best Program for Your Pain. So we're going to go over these in more detail, but just to mention them, rehabilitation, early activation. You've got to get the, the area moving quick. You got to relieve the pain and get the area moving quick. Um, you also need uh, some mind therapy. You got, it's profoundly affecting to people. To uh, the mood changes. There's a post-traumatic stress due to the whole thing. Uh, you know, people touch you and it hurts. You can't get the hugs and the and the and the support you need. Um, there's a lot of depression, anxiety. You got to get uh, some therapy and counseling and uh, some ideas on how to cope with this. It's very important. Medications, well, you know, a lot of the medicines are just quick fixes and you use them here and there. non inflammatory drugs, the opiates may be uh, helpful. Steroids, briefly. Antidepressants sometimes help the uh, nerve pain in the ways we discussed. Now, like I said, we've discussed these and we're going to discuss them in much more detail in the program. So, uh, I don't you think we're going to miss these. We're going to go over them in much more detail. But anti-seizure medicines, which uh, help Neuropathic pain a lot of times. They also have complex real pain syndrome. Ketamine ointments, lidocaine ointments, calcitonin for the deep bone pain. Uh, nerve blocks can be very effective, and you need to do them early, not late. Uh, for people that nerve blocks are effective, sometimes they'll even do surgery called sympathectomy on the area that's affected. Spinal cord stimulators in some of my more severe cases have been very helpful, and all kinds of neural stimulation has been helpful from peripheral TENS units to uh, peripheral nerve stimulators, to deep brain stimulators, even in my more severe cases. Um, Intrathecal drug pumps, um, and nowadays we're looking at IVIG, ketamine therapy, other autoimmune therapies, hyperbaric oxygen. There's lots of uh, alternative therapies that relax and also uh, help with the inflammatory components and the uh, nerve pain components. And like I said, in the rest of this program, pro find the best program for your pain, we're going to go over all those therapies in more detail. So um, what we'll do is we'll print a list uh, for the complex regional pain syndrome question, and uh, then you can pay more attention to them as we go. All right. I hope that helps. Thanks.